Welcome to Nourish with Michelle Fox, your guide to a vibrant life after 40. If consistency has been a challenge for you and you occasionally forget self-care, you, my friend, are in the right place. Tune in for weekly inspiration to nourish your mind. I know your plate's full and I want to help you support a life and a body that you adore. Let's dig in. So as we celebrate our one year anniversary of Nourish with Michelle Fox, I cannot think of a better guest to introduce my community to, which is my mother, aka Mamacita, aka Reverend Mom, aka she's got lots of AKAs. (laughs) Because if you know me in real life, there is a good chance you know my mom. She has the most infectious laugh, the most beautiful spirit, and I invited her to join us in this conversation because she also has a faith that is larger than anything I have ever experienced in my life. We grew up in a very faith-filled household, and I say we, my sister and my younger brother as well. And then in that process, I'm giving you kind of the Cliff's Notes version, but in that process, Mom did become a reverend. She went back to school. She went through all the ordination process. We might even touch on that. So she took the faith to even a higher level than what we already were experiencing as children in the household. And so with that, I thought none other than my mom could bring us perhaps some of the hope that some of us need right now. In this spirit, a lot of us are in this period of whether we are taking care of our parents in some cases. A lot of us have aging parents. Some of us are still taking care of younger children in the household. Some of us, like me, are going through a transition where we have teenagers and they need us a little bit less. And so this is the time that it's so important and even crucial, I would say, to lean into our faith. And so, Mom, yes. welcome to the show. Thank you. It is my honor. Thank you for having me on this special, special topic. You know, I love this topic. So thank you. You are welcome. Thank you for obviously being a mom to me and Andy and Mike, but also being a mom to our larger circle. If you're listening to this, I am sure there's a good chance you probably see her as your mom as well. (laughs) So before we jump into some of the juicy gems all around spirit and finding our way, I would love to invite you to play a rapid fire game with me. I love those. When you interview your other guests, I love those. Okay. So I hope I'm good. Oh, I have no doubt. And I guess side note, you won't be surprised. Mom is one of our biggest fans of the show. So yes. just as a hip tip to my previous guests, or maybe my future guests, please know I always get the notes from mom, whether it was a good conversation or uh, not going to use some work. That's so. right. <laughs> <laughs> I so love having you in my corner. Okay. So the fun, let's jump in. All right. We didn't necessarily grow up with too many animals. We had a few, but if you had to choose Mike's pet iguana or our black lab, Malcolm, which one would you choose? I would choose the iguana. The iguana. Okay. Good job. Rapid fire. Here we go. When I say sweet, savory, or salty, which one lands for you? Savory. Savory. And then last but not least, would you be willing to share a story from your childhood in the kitchen? Oh, yes. Yes. I don't mind at all. My grandmother had so many wonderful things about her and a lot of cooking secrets. She would not tell us. She was an excellent cook. Back in the day when she was growing up, she had to work in a kitchen for a European family, and that was her job. And so she learned how to cook really, really good. And some of her favorite recipes, I've forgotten most of them because she wouldn't write them down. She wouldn't even tell us, but I watched, I paid attention. 
And her best one was macaroni and cheese. Mm-hmm. And she used the real butter, the real cream, the gluten filled macaroni noodles, all the things I no longer eat, but it was to die for. Mm, so yum. yeah so, and I just loved being in the kitchen with her she had um big hips and I was young so they probably looked bigger than they really were but once in a while you know she would rub the flour or whatever it was she was cooking on her backside and giggle about it and continue to cook so those were some of my most favorite times in the kitchen with my grandmother and she didn't talk a lot at all Hmm. Yeah. So I had to fill in the silence, but she was wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Yes, ma'am. So now, as I alluded at the top of this conversation, a lot of my friends and women in my community are going through some really hard times, whether Mm -hmm. it's pain through transition of a divorce or even Mm -hmm. just moving. And I shouldn't say just because moving can be a lot of work and a lot of transition. And as I have watched you through my life from day one, you have been one of the most faith-filled mm. people I know. And so can we just start there? Like, where would you say that your foundation came from as far as your belief in God and your faith that things always seem to work out? Thank you for that question. I, I rarely get to give that answer or that story, but... I have shared with a few people, I knew God and my spiritual connection before I even knew who God was. Mm. When I was growing up, we lived with my grandmother for the first six years of my life as my parents were saving for their own home. And they did an addition to the house. They built an addition to the house. And that was my room. And it faced a huge maple tree in the backyard and the window was right there. So every night before I went to bed, the shadow from the moon would just reflect the leaves in the room. And I would look at them and many times in the background, there would be noise and cursing and just a sense of fear But when I looked through the window and I saw the shadows coming in, that would put me to sleep. And I built in a resistance to any kind of negativity just by looking through that window. Mm -hmm. And I knew there was someone in there with me, did Mm -hmm. not know the name God, didn't know Jesus, didn't know the Holy Spirit, but I knew someone was with me and it gave me great joy. And I often just went to sleep, just laying there talking to the spirit, feeling the spirit. When I got older, my mother and my grandmother started me in Sunday school. And that's when I learned all of the the names and the processes and the Bible. I learned about the Bible, Bible stories and went to Sunday school and church. And that's where I met your dad and his family, which was the big family. And we all were friends and my life just was built on faith. And there were so many God moments along the way where I could have been taken out by a car accident, by something falling. I have so many stories and it didn't happen. I just called on that spirit and say, you know, please save me or thank you or afterwards. uh, Oh, that's what that was. So I knew it. So my faith was easy to come by because it's been built up over the years so as we grew up you and dad were very social and Mm -hmm. in all the different social circles we found ourselves in a lot of people would point at us and look at us and kind of say you guys are like the Cosby family like everybody's doing well everybody's always happy and of course there's no such thing as a perfect family. We were right. not a perfect family. Right. And I just bring that up to say, you went through some really hard times. Yes. However, what I witnessed as your daughter is that, yes, you may have gone over some bumps, but you always survived and or thrived, I would say. Mm-hmm. And so where does that come from? There is 
one of my favorite scriptures that comes out of the book of Hebrews, Hebrews 11, the first chapter, and it describes faith. It talks about hope, the hope of what we would like to see, what we want in our life, and the assurance of that happening after you have hoped for it and lived your life, as you live your life. Well, I lived that before I ever read the book of Hebrews. If I would feel something tough coming on or like a job change or work or, you know, arguments with your dad or something in the church where I could not go ahead because I was a woman, I would keep my my hope alive. I would say, okay, that's okay. This is this God, this is what I want. And I had the assurance that it was going to happen. Sometimes it took years, sometimes, oh, sometimes maybe a week or maybe instantly. And that has just built up over the years. So there is nothing that I can think of that really frightened me to let me know that I could not overcome it because I had God in my life and that I lived it. I lived every bit of it. And some of you who may be watching, if you are a pastor or clergy or have pastor or clergy in your life, there's a saying, we used to laugh about it, said, we are going to end up living every sermon that we've preached. Mm. And that is so true. And I'm grateful. So, and gratitude. Gratitude was the biggest thing, I think, that pushed me through because we grew up my two brothers and I in a very poor house, but I didn't know it until I was in high school, obviously, when the other kids were wearing all the nice clothes and we couldn't afford them. But we grew up in fairly dysfunctional, a lot of noise, again, all of that stuff. But I had the audacity to believe that God was bringing me through this. And Mm -hmm. it just has grown over the years. So that's, that's where I am. Let me ask you something. Are you tired of those relentless hot flashes, night sweats, and the roller coaster ride of menopausal symptoms? Well, look no further because your favorite culinary nutritionist, yeah, that's me, I wrote the ultimate guide for you, my friend. And is it hot in here or is it just me? I do my best to empower you with seven essential steps to dramatically reduce those pesky hot flashes through the power of nutrition. You are not meant to suffer during menopause and I want to make sure of that. So just as a heads up, inside this guide, you will find that I dive deep into the science behind menopausal symptoms. I explain how specific foods and nutrients can work wonders in alleviating those symptoms. And the goal is for you to get a clear understanding of the root causes and how to address them naturally. I also take a step-by-step approach to outline very simple yet effective strategies to minimize hot flashes, mood swings, weight gain, and a lot more. Take control of your hormonal balance and experience relief like never before. And as a special treat, you'll find a collection of delectable recipes designed to support your journey. That is my bonus to you. I want you to take charge of your well-being and reclaim your vitality. And this guide, I promise you, my friend, will get you that much closer. So head on over to michellefox.com. You can order your book. Is it hot in here or is it just me there? Or we are now on Amazon. So head on over to Amazon if you prefer to read the guide on your Kindle. And just look up, is it hot in here or is it just me by Michelle Fox? I want to support you. So please do yourself a favor and grab your copy today. So you mentioned your ordination. Can you tell us a little bit more about that process? And one, like, how did you decide? Because I remember as a kid and you told us you were doing this and we're like, yeah, yeah, that's mom. She always has these creative ideas. But then you went ahead and you did it. So I want to hear about how you came to decide to be an ordained minister. And then if you could walk us just like from a 30,000 square foot view about 
how that ordination process takes place in the AME church? Okay. Okay. My grandmother was AME and she is the one that made the decision that the rest of the family was going to be AME because way back in the day of slavery, we could not attend a European church. And so Richard Allen, who was the founder, decided to set up a church where Black people could go and slaves and former slaves. So that's how the faith got started. The faith practice got started. But my coming into the ministry was a call and it was an actual call. I remember so many things that had happened in airports and when I would, you know, we'd go visit you in New York or we'd visit Andy or Mike. And this is before I answered my call. God put me in positions to help people in extraordinary positions. And I never really thought about it. Oh, thank you, God, for letting me do that. And then one night I couldn't sleep and something nudged me. So I thought it was your dad because he snored. And I thought it was him and he was straight out. No, that wasn't, it wasn't him. And this happened about a week for about five days in a row. Every night, same time I'd wake up, I'd feel this nudge. And the last night that it happened, I sat straight up in the bed and I said, okay, God, I'm yours. Mm. And that was my call story. And mm. I remember crying and just being so happy. And then probably the next week or the next weekend, I went into my pastor, the Reverend Jay Langston Boyd, who's um, now passed away. And I told him of my call. And he had the same reaction that some other, you know, folks may have. Oh, well, how about you just teach Sunday school? Oh, yeah. How about you join the Women's Missionary Society? How about you come up with some other things that you like about the church? And we already know, don't challenge <laughs> Sheila Baker Johnson. Because if you do, if you do, <laughs> watch out, world. Uh -huh. That just probably puts your heels in even deeper. It did. It did. You were determined to say, no, this is what I'm going this to do. This is what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. And so after a couple of times, you know, conversations with him, just really pushing, he said, okay come on in, you know, this isn't going to be easy. You know, you've got to get your, your master's degree. And at uh, that time I hadn't been to school in probably 15 years. And he was very encouraging, very supportive and told me that he started school as an old man and I could do it. If he could do it, I could do it. And it just went from there. And they actually, he actually hired me as the treasurer for the church for two and a half years so that my tuition would be paid. And I live. So it was just, it was beautiful. It is a beautiful story. Beautiful story. Yes. So you put your desire out there yes. and God met you and said, yes, yes. we're going to support you on this yes. journey. That's right. Mm. That's right. I put my belief in my hope and then I hoped for assurance and the assurance came. So mm. that's exactly what, that's exactly what happened. And it was not easy. It was a male dominated profession as it still is. And in, in most places, and it didn't matter. I mean, the ordination process was long. You had to take classes. There were many conferences you had to go through throughout the year. You had to travel to these places back and forth. And then you, of course, study your Bible. There's a lot of study, biblical studies to do. And then you had to have your Master's of Divinity, which I was working on at Isla School of Theology, where I now sit on the board of directors. So I'm I'm very proud of my school and the education that I got there. So, yeah, I'm so proud of you as well. Let's do your you. quick timeline around that. So you sure. got your ordination. Uh huh. Then you became a pastor at Shorter AME. Is that the next on step? the staff, the pastoral staff. I was That's not a pastor. So okay. we were all somewhere in the process. Some had already been ordained, and there's two ordinations. You you deacon. And then you're an elder. And once you become the elder, then you can perform communion, baptisms, marriages, weddings, all of those, those things of the church. Awesome. So, okay. So, yeah. so then a quick recap. So mm -hmm. you went back to school, mm -hmm. got your ordination, mm -hmm. became part of the staff at Shorter AME. Mm -hmm. 
and then this is super cliff notes because then yeah, after some right. time you started your own church yes and that was after i left shorter ame church and it was it went for eight years the first seven years were just blissful it was wonderful we served the community um we did food banks we served the homeless I had a contract, nonprofit contract with the city of Denver under Mayor Pena. And it was it was just a wonderful time, beautiful membership. And then the eighth year um, was a horrible divorce. And so I left that church and I sat out for, I want to say two, three years and then joined where I am now at Colorado Community Church. So in between that time, those those seven really fruitful years as a pastor, I learned so very much. And it was such a gift for me. It really yes. was a gift. And let's not forget, you were also a chaplain at the hospital yeah. for quite a few years. Yes. During this time, when I first went to ILIF, there was a requirement that you do some kind of out service at no pay. This is for free. So I had to do 15 hours a week and I chose Aurora Medical Center because the head of the department, David Reeves, is just Reverend David Reeves, was just amazing. I interviewed with him at ILIF and he said, come on board. And so I did. And then I was recently, right before, right after COVID, I left after 19 years. That is amazing. Yes. yes. And then you also currently do weddings and funerals. Yes. Don't you? Yes. Okay. Yes. I still do eulogies, weddings, anything that's pastoral mm. I'm available for. And I did put up a website. It just wasn't my time. And the website is, is still there. But it just, I had more fun, I think, putting the website together and learning all the new things with your help, of course, mm-hmm. and information from the community. But people do know about me, and I just haven't done the marketing that's required, but I'm still here. So anyone watching, you know, call me if you need any of those, those things. So house blessings, pet blessings, whatever. So, yeah. I love it. We will put all your contact information in the show notes. Thank you. And so for my friends who are listening right now, perhaps I'm just trying to think of somebody in particular, perhaps she's a woman and she's running her business, her own business, and it's high pressure. She's got a son who she's also responsible to take to and from school. She also has friends she wants to keep up with and she's in a marriage where she knows it's just not a good situation. Okay. Do you have any words for her to give her hope as far as making those choices that she knows she needs to make for herself? I do. Um, I would first say that she should meditate, go into a space with just her. And I don't know if she believes in God, if she's a believer in Christ, the Holy Spirit, Buddhism, if she's Sikh, whatever her higher power is, she needs to spend time with them and really discern what the basic issue is within herself. And no one can do that but her. Once she decides that, then she has to move forward without fear, but with faith, everything with faith. And when we do that, the people around us either go away or they change Mm -hmm. or decide to support us, one or the other. And in, you know, so many places in in my life, those just seemed insurmountable at times. At the beginning, I said, well, okay, God, you got this. I can't do this. It's all yours. And God took care of them in many creative ways that I would never think of. (laughs) So that's what I think she should do. And give attention to that child as much as she can. Those things that she loves. And if, you know, and I'm a proponent of counseling. If she can afford counseling, if, if her husband would join her, fine. If not, she needs to go on her own and just really increase her faith in herself, Mm, in herself and her God. Yeah. And she'll be fine. 
and it may not be overnight, but it might be. Because God knows what what's coming. That's that's the other wonderful thing about my faith is I may not know where this road is leading, but I know that God knows. And I know that if I just hold on fast to my faith and my friendship with him and thanking him for visiting me in my childhood through that window, through the shadows of the trees, then he's going to take care of me. And he's done it every time, mm. every time. Yeah. yeah. So so you mentioned your childhood and that just sparked memories from mm. my childhood, specifically okay. around college age and a little afterward mm -hmm. I went through some experimentation of mm -hmm. some things <laughs> including uh -huh. telling you I'm not a Christian and I'm finding my own way right. and so with you being so faithful what were some of the dialogues that perhaps you had with yourself and or with God to help you know that Michelle will find her way mm -hmm. I was just simply prayerful. Of course, when you told me that for the first time, I just, I cried. I got up the phone. I'm like, oh, she's lost. And then two seconds later, God's like, pick yourself up. She's your child. And because she's yours, she's covered. And I just, I prayed a lot. And with certain personalities, and I'm not saying it's yours, you have to allow people to discover their their bumps and their ways and some people not you are not comfortable with being told how to exercise their faith or you know really what to do but it comes out it comes as they say it comes out in the wash so <laughs> and I was secure enough in my faith with God that I knew he was going to take care of you and you had to experience those things before you made the decisions that you have made which have I think been wonderful. So yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you for just being so consistent with your faith. I think mm -hmm. that allowed me the freedom to kind of step uh -huh. out and explore, mm -hmm. knowing that yeah, at the end of the day, mm -hmm. mom's still praying for me. Oh yeah. And that's always passed down through the generations. Cause even Angel's like, Oh, don't worry, grandma's prayed about it. We're fine. And that's so right. she get she gets it. She knows. She knows, yes. She knows. Yeah. <laughs> Including, yes. she might not use the word prayer. In fact, I know she uses the word manifestation. Just okay. a fun story. I think I shared with you that at the beginning of the summer, mm -hmm. she applied to one place to work. And yes. of course, Steve and I were like, Pumpkin, let's apply to quite a few different places just in case you don't get that dream job. And she's like, no, I'm going to manifest it. Of course, a couple of weeks go by, no call, no call, no call. Yes. And uh, she's like, I need money. I'm like, well, well, maybe you should have applied to different jobs. A week later, she gets the call. It is the place that she wanted to work. And she's like, see, I manifested it. Oh, so I love it. I love now it. she has an after school job, which is perfect. Yes, so, yes, yes. Yes. I just say that to say, uh, by you having faith. Yeah. It showed me as that example and somehow that showed angel the example yeah. and so for my listeners today please know that whether we're talking about faith in your world whether we're talking mm -hmm. about the eating choices that you're making mm -hmm. and or your choices around fitness or mm -hmm. perhaps your attitude yeah the children are watching like that they, they see they don't and miss. feel all of our moves yes they whether we miss. know it or not absolutely <laughs> so absolutely friendly reminder to perhaps uh pay a little bit more attention to to all these areas yes firstly for yourself so that you are living the life that you are meant to and then of course absolutely the children on the back side of that get permission to live the life that they want to live as well sure, sure. Great mm. advice, Michelle. Great advice. But mm. yeah, the faith is a wonderful thing. It's scary at first. It's scary to let go of what you're feeling and all the things around you and totally give it over to God or your higher power. Because as people, we like to be able to control ourselves, to control what we do. And there are people on, you know, every extreme of that in terms of control. But when you totally release it. And that's what God wants us to do. My God wants me to do that because he knows what, or she knows what I'm going to or they. end up, or they, he, she, or they. My kids get me 
all the time. I know being binary. they do. I know they Don't do. Being binary. They yes. Do. I'm binary. I'm on the boarded <laughs> island, so I'm very binary. <laughs> yeah. So, which I think is wonderful for me. So I, yeah, want to just encourage people. You have to release. You have to release. Yeah. So if you'd be willing to dive a little deeper and just share, mm-hmm. like, I mean, you've lived, oh, long. don't time. thump me now, but I think 73 years, 72 years, yes. 72 yeah. years on this planet. And so obviously there have been some highs and some lows, but mm-hmm. would you be willing to walk us through perhaps one of the lowest points in your life and how faith pulled you through that? There's so many things oh, taking my mind back, but it I'm pretty sure it was when your dad got sick mm. and it wasn't even, I, I foresaw that I knew he would not be with us much longer because of his lifestyle and what he was eating and his friends, my friends, his clients all would tell him manage your blood pressure because blood pressure manifests itself sometimes in your forehead. It's like little worms crawling across your head because your veins get real big because Mm. of the blood. Uh, So that's just a medical part of it. But at the time when he did have his stroke, the things that most people would think of like because we were divorced, but there's no way after being married 42 years, I was just going to let him just, okay, see ya by the wayside but I made sure that the hospital the ICU everywhere he went was going to be the best care and so in that process I didn't think about the mortgage which we both still were on the mortgage I didn't think about really food buying food fuel all of those things that most people, responsible people would be thinking of, but I lived at the hospital. You were in just, trauma. Yeah, I was in trauma. Yeah. And God knew I was in trauma. And so along the way, I thought, well, you can't worry. I just, I did not worry or it just would have been crazy. So I decided to go by the house one day and check the mailbox, which was full because I wasn't living there. Then I went through some things and found some things that said, oh, maybe you need to take care of this. Well, meantime, there were people who truly loved your dad, truly loved me, who would just come up to me and put money in my hand, not little money, Mm -hmm. money enough to pay three months worth of mortgage. Oh my goodness, mom. Yes, they would give me King Supers cards Mm -hmm. to buy gas for my car they they knew I had I was I was doing the sub, substitute teaching at Denver DPS and it was just maybe once or twice a week so the school called me and asked me hey would you like the district would you like to become like a permanent teacher you know and full-time what's the word I'm looking for not full-time teacher, but like a teacher's aide, not or? teacher's aide, a uh, substitute. Thank you. Oh, full-time substitute teacher cuckoo here, but full-time substitute. And it just so happened there were teachers who were going on maternity leave. There's, you know, one woman took a three month journey to Europe and, and I was there and that was the most, that was a huge blessing because I was there every day earning money, doing things I love. I love the kiddos, you know, they loved you back. Oh, <laughs> doing field trips, all of that. Those are things I could not have projected. I said, yeah. okay, well, Michael's had this joke. You need to go, you know, teach or what? I mean, those things came at me. They fell into my lap, literally fell into my lap. So I didn't have to worry about the money. I didn't have to worry about... Um, housing, all of that came in time. So that was probably the toughest time because I was juggling so many things and wondering, okay, now where are you going to be at the end of this, but not worried about it. It's like, okay, God, what are you going to do with me? You know, am I going to teach forever? I'm going to go back and and preach. Am I going to get my own church? What am I going to do? And they were questions like you're asking me questions now. They were not like, oh my gosh, what am I? I would never got to that. Never got to that. And I'm forever grateful. And that was my faith. 
Mm, I want a testimony Mm. that God is looking out for you. God's had your back. Absolutely. From day one and, and God had your back during such a traumatic experience. Yes, yes, yes. For my friends who don't know, my father did end up dying of stroke and high blood pressure. But before he actually, you know, his final day of death, it was two freaking long years of us watching him slowly die in and out of hospitals, in and out of, well, it wasn't in and out of hospice. I think hospice was the last stop. Hospice right? was the last stop. The last stop. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, that is mm-hmm. uh, a pain I would not wish on anybody's family yeah. or anybody's body which is right. why I'm so motivated to continue doing mm-hmm. the work to help create healthier communities so that mm-hmm. nobody has this type of demise yes in their yes. future and it was you know I have such credit to my children who all stepped in in so many different ways and just did what they do they just did what they do and then for those of you who do know as we know Mike moved back. He had a wonderful job at Disney and I tease him about, you know, working for the rides, but no, he, <laughs> he did much, much, much more. Yeah. He actually managed accounts for, for folks in their retirement and all kind of stuff, but he gave that up and moved to Denver. And then of course, Michelle and Andy were just, they were just my right hand, my left hand, my feet, my everything, my eyes, my ears. And so they stepped right in during that time and just made it a, a smooth transition, you know? We had to sell the house and then I chose to I chose not to stay in that big house. They said, Mom, if you want to stay, we'll make sure you can do this until you can afford it. I remember that. And I said, No way, I don't want to be in that big house by myself. And things just just happened. Just happened. And I landed on my feet and, and always felt I was on my feet, but lots of help from my kiddos and and people who love me. So many people from Shorter, so many people that I had met at Colorado Community hadn't really joined yet. People in the community, people at ILIF, just amazing stories. So things I could not have known about. So yeah, faith, faith is a real thing. And now that we are in a world that appears to just turn upside down, you need your faith so that you're not walking around in fear because fear will kill you. It will literally kill you. It, it changes your mind. It physically changes your body. You go through a lot of things. So you don't need to be in fear. And there, there's a source higher than we are who can handle that. So in this world, you need your faith. So let's get working on it. <laughs> Yes, constant process, day mm-hmm. by day practice. Yes. That's the word I was reaching for. Oh, okay, Definitely. practice. Day yeah. by day practice. It is, yeah. Mm. Is. Yeah. Well, thank you. Your voice, mm. of course, just soothes me. You're, you're my mommy. Mm-hmm. And I know that your voice has been soothing our listeners. Is there anything else you want to add before we go? No, I encourage everyone who, who listens to continue to take care of your body. If you know, Michelle, you know, I know you're taking care of your body better. You may not be doing it a hundred percent like I'm not, but I'm trying every day. Do that because you need that in today's world. You, You need to be present, not only emotionally and physically, spiritually, you need all of those to get through. So let's do that. Let's not be afraid to do that and do it with joy. Yeah. So in all of my programs, I lead with nutrition, Mm. fitness, and mindset. And so your faith and your Mm. spirituality absolutely informs and strengthens our mindset. And so thank you for sharing you with us today. I'm, I'm so grateful for you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for having me and giving me an opportunity. Anytime I have an opportunity to share, I do. So thank you. Thank you. I love you, Michelle. Thanks so much for listening to Nourish. Have you been driving, doing laundry, or walking around the neighborhood? Sweet. I've got show notes for you. Hop on over to michellefox.com forward slash podcast when you are ready. I will let you know that on the page, you will find resources to support what you just learned on today's show 
And then of course, you can grab some health supportive freebies as well. If you enjoyed this episode, I would be honored if you would leave a review on whichever podcast platform you are listening on. It will help me with my mission to build healthier communities one person at a time, and it will help you because you will be part of that mission. I'll be back next week, and I encourage you to keep showing up for yourself and know that you and your health matter. Big love.